Hello. This video is really to provide an overview and introduction to uh, location strategies as part of an introduction to operations management course. We'll cover some of the key concepts and, and drivers of the decision on where to locate, both at a macro level and a micro level. And then we will introduce uh, three tools to uh, three tools to help uh, provide quantitative assessments on location decisions, factor rating method, the center of gravity method, and the transportation model. I will include separate videos of all three of those where I go through examples, but they will be introduced uh, within the context uh, of this video as well. So let's think a bit about what uh, about how companies make choices. And I'm going to use Federal Express as, a, as, a, as an initial example, just to sort of lay the foundation and contextualize the problem somewhat. Federal Express uses a central hub con uh, concept, and this is not unique to Federal Express. It is, in fact, uh, the way that uh, many uh, freight or courier companies operate the business. So they have a central hub. Uh, it enables service to more locations with fewer aircraft, and that helps control costs. So if I am FedEx and I have a package uh, that has to go from uh, London, Ontario to Winnipeg, uh, and I have another one that wants to go from London, Ontario to Halifax, uh, and another that's from London, Ontario to Vancouver, I could uh, run a plane from or a truck from London to each of those three locations or I could go to a central hub as for example uh, Toronto with the stuff from London and then aggregate there and then all of the packages that are going to Halifax would go from that central hub all of the packages that are going to to Winnipeg and Vancouver in the same way so it matches aircraft flights with package loads and it allows for that aggregation uh, and it re it reduces the the cost of mishandling and delay in transit because there's total control from pickup to delivery so uh, there, there we have a location strategy that allows us to deliver on our customer promise in a way that is cost effective. So location is usually a long term strategy because you're making significant uh, investments in infrastructure or at the very least signing long term leases. So it is an important decision. These decisions are increasingly global in nature. They have a significant impact on fixed and variable costs, so we need to make these decisions wisely. Uh, the decisions are made relatively infrequently. We don't move you know, relatively helter-skelter. We move strategically. Uh, and the objective is to maximize the benefit of location to the firm. So you'll see there, it isn't necessarily to minimize cost, it is to maximize the benefit of the firm. Uh, and, and in some cases, depending on what the strategic priority is, uh, it will not be the lo lowest cost or it may be the lowest cost. Consider, for example, uh, if you are locating a grocery store. Now you want to locate a grocery store in a place where people have access to you, where they might see you, where they can get to you easily. So you might actually pay for a higher cost location for that very reason, the same with a restaurant. However, if you are building a manufacturing facility, in fact, in those circumstances, you might want to be uh, you, you might want to have a low cost location, you might want to be on uh, transportation routes, and you might also want to be away from populations if you are going to have noise pollution or smell or things like that. So the, the, there, there are multiple factors that can go into these, discuss, uh, these decisions and it's not always about the cheapest. And so, as I said, location decisions based on low cost require careful consideration because there are other things you need to think about. Once in place, location related, located related costs, sorry, are fixed in place and difficult to reduce. And determining optimal facility location is a good investment. So spending time thinking about it, spending time and money, frankly, investing resources in doing a good job has positive payback. So, uh, 
I'm going to say it again because I don't think we say it enough. Cost is not always the most important aspect of a strategic decision. And that is true in location. Uh, four key attributes to think about when strategy is based on innovation. Uh, high quality and specialized inputs. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the benefits of being around suppliers, of being around uh, customers and about, or frankly, about being around competitors. Uh, and, uh, and, and so all of those factors might come into place. You might want to foster an environment that encourages investment and local rivalry that really sort of drives innovation. Uh, you might have a sophisticated local market and you might have some benefit of local presence of related and supporting industries. So all of those things uh, need to be considered when we are making our location decision and we shouldn't necessarily, it doesn't mean we ignore cost and it doesn't mean frankly that cost isn't the most significant driver, but what it does mean is we need to step back and make an assessment of what the strategic priorities of this location decision are and then evaluate those priorities, evaluate each location in the context of those priorities. So again, they're long-term decisions, they're made infrequently, uh, decisions greatly affect both fixed and variable costs and once committed, uh, it's hard to change. So there, let, let's talk more at the, at the macro level, the country decisions. What are things that we should consider there? Political risks, government rules, attitudes, corruption, incentives. Frankly, governments often give tax incentives and other incentives to have people locate there. Those are cost-driven things. Corruption uh, and, and risk uh, become important considerations. Cultural and economic issues. Is there stability? Are we accepted there? Or is this something that, that, that may or may not be suitable in that country? where our markets are, obviously, and that's not just markets of customers, it's markets for suppliers, uh, that provide, that's important. Labor talent, attitudes, productivity, costs, we, you know, often, and we talked earlier uh, about uh, productivity measures, uh, output uh, and cost measures uh, matter, communication with suppliers, exchange rate and currency risks. Uh, one of the biggest influences on costs transnationally is exchange rate. So having a good sense of what the exchange rate risk is in specific markets uh, is an important factor in making location decisions. So once we get from sort of the country level, then we get down to regional or community decisions. Uh, and, and, you know, part of that is, you know, where do you want to be? How attractive is the region? What's the availability of labor and the cost and productivity of labor? Costs and availability of utilities, any incentives that might be provided? Environmental regulations, uh, both positive and negative, uh, government incentives uh, uh, and physical policy, availability uh, and cost of land and construction, uh, proximity to both customers and suppliers. So again, similar, but now we're getting much more specific. And then when we get down to a specific site, the cost uh, and size of the site, the availability of air, rail, highways, water systems in order to, to get uh, our products to, or our cust to customers or our customers to us, uh, the ease of availability of supply, uh, zoning restrictions, can we build there, uh, proximity of services and supplies needed, and environmental impact issues. So again, as we get more specific in those location decisions, we become much more detailed in the types of questions we're asking. So I already talked about this and, and we have separate videos that we've covered with respect to uh, productivity. Uh, and, and productivity is one measure, you know, just because labor is cheaper in another one place versus another, we have to consider uh, labor too. Uh, here we've got uh, uh, labor cost per day, or units per day, cost per unit. And so we can consider that uh, here, 
the labor costs are much lower, but we're only producing 20 units. Uh, so uh, we have to consider uh, both the production level and the cost of that production level. Uh, exchange rates I've talked about already. We can't underestimate by any stretch the importance of thinking about and managing exchange rate risk and currency risk. Uh, they, they will have a significant impact on costs and rates change over time. So an, an assessment of the, the, the potential for shifts in exchange rates and those impacts on our cost structure are important factors to consider when we're making a location decision. Um, we have tangible and intangible costs, right? Tangible utilities, labor, materials, taxes, uh, intangible uh, are harder to quantify. Education, public transportation, community, quality of life, are all factors if we are trying to attract people to come work for us. If you look at some of these service industries like technology, they do a lot of things to try and get people to come work there. And part of that is locating in a place that is appealing to live. Political risk values and culture. Uh, National and state and local governments' uh, attitudes towards private and intellectual property, zoning, pollution, employment stability. If there's risk there, that location might be uh, of greater risk. What is the risk of our investment being nationalized? Is there uh, a request by the country that uh, they own a share of, of the facility? All of those Come into, um, uh, come into the decision-making process for locating a facility. You know, absenteeism, we, we measure some of this in productivity. Uh, global cultures have different attitudes towards punctua punctuality, legal and ethical issues, and you really have to decide what is important for you as a company. Talked already about proximity to markets. This is particularly important for services where the customer is involved, but you also have shipping costs and those sorts of things that you have to evaluate. Uh, Just-in-time systems or high transportation costs may make it important for manufacturers as well. Proximity to suppliers, perishable goods, high transportation costs, bulky products. If you look at a at a product like milk as an example. We will often see clusters of dairy farms around large urban centers because milk is expensive to ship. It has to be refrigerated. It is a significant proportion of water. We can ship products like cheese and yogurt, which have lower moisture contents, much greater degrees, but fluid milk uh, doesn't travel as well. It's, it's, it's perishable and it's bulky and it's expensive so in that in that circumstance uh, you'll make a different you'll make a different decision proximity to competitors is one that surprises people a lot um, this is a concept called competitive clustering and competitive clustering often shows up by, uh, as a multiple choice question on my exams just as a heads up uh, I think it's important competitive clustering is where there is benefit uh, to locating close to one of your competitors or locating close to uh, multiple competitors. Uh, it's often driven by resources such as natural resources, information, capital, talent. Um, and it's, it can be driven by supporting industries, so uh, complementary industries. So you'll often see technology companies locate in close proximity to each other in order that they have access to talent, uh, so in order that they uh, have access to other suppliers, venture capital investors, uh, chip manufacturers, those sorts of things. On the services side, uh, you will sometimes see competitive clustering uh, in industries where a decision on what and who to purchase what to buy and who to purchase it from isn't made until the very last minute so if you look we often see competitive clustering in the car market because it makes it easy for customers to go test drive cars from several different manufacturers and if you were a car company that said 
I am not going to locate where the other car, man, uh, sorry, where the other dealerships locate. I'm going to locate across town. If you are a popular one, that might work great. But if if someone is going to say, uh, I, I'm sort of torn between three or four different sedans. I'm going to go drive them all, talk about price with them all. And I'm going to leave that one out because it's too much of a pain to get to. These ones are clustered together. There's also evidence of this in quick service restaurants that we often don't decide what we're going to eat till we drive to it and then see what our choices are, which is why we'll often see clustering of fast food and, and other types of food establishments because what we want to do is get into the consideration set. If that's a spontaneous decision and we uh, aren't in the consideration set, we lose an ability to make that sale. So competitive clustering, important concept and one that uh, 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 is used for a variety of reasons. So here are some companies that, that are experienced, you know, winemaking. There we have the natural resources of land and climate, uh, Okanagan Valley, Niagara-on-the-Lake, Prince Edward County, the Bordeaux region of France, uh, software firms, Canada, Ontario, Silicon Valley, talent resources, uh, venture capitalists nearby. Uh, talked about fast food already. Uh, computer hardware manufacturing in Singapore and Japan, high technological penetration rates per capita GDP, skilled educated workforce with large pool of engineers, and also uh, complementary suppliers in the neighborhood. So let's, th that is in uh, less than 20 minutes sort of an introduction into the thought process for, for strategy uh, on location. Let's take a few minutes now to talk about some of the quantitative approaches we have within operations management to making those choices. So the first one's called the factor rating method. And the factor rating method is popular because it allows you to consider a wide variety of, uh, of factors into the analysis. It doesn't take just one factor. It allows you to say, well, I have several things that are important to me and how do I balance those? So to do that, we have six steps. First, we have to say what's important. What are the key success factors? We have to, we have to determine those. Then we have to assign a weight or say how important each of them are. We could say they're all worth the same amount or this one is twice as important as that one. And then we, uh, and, and, and then we can relative, we can weight the performance based on the importance of the key success factor. We have to develop a scale to measure each of those factors. And then we have to score each location that we're choosing from relative to that factor. So if we go from one to five as an example, or one to 10, we can make one good and five bad. Usually we do one uh, bad and five or 10 good so that a higher score is better. Then we multiply score by weights for each location, and then we recommend the location with the best point score. Relatively straightforward. So let's look at an example here. We've got uh, key success factors here for a location, uh, labor availability and attitude, people to car ratio, per capita income, tax structure, education and health. And here we've got weights that sum to one. You don't have to have weights that sum to one. Uh, it's often used that way, but, but really as long as you have relative emphasis numbers, they can, they, they can be almost anything. So here, tax structure is the most important. It has a weight of 0.39. Labor availability has a, uh, has a weight of 0.25. Education and health, 0.21 per capita income 0.1 and people to car ratio, while it matters to us, it matters much less than labor and availability, uh, uh, labor and its availability. So then we're gonna consider France and Denmark, and we can't see the score for Denmark here because uh, it's under my head and I don't think I can move myself, but you can see we multiply the weight times the score to get a weighted score, and then we sum the weighted score to get a score for France. Uh, let's see, the score for Denmark is going to be lower. 
and so we then would choose France. But this lets us to this lets us consider a, a number of factors and weights uh, in making that uh, decision. We talked earlier, or I talked in other videos about break-even analysis on for, for technology. Uh, we can also do that for location decisions. Because I've recorded two other videos on break-even analysis, I'm not going to take a take a detailed look at this. I'd encourage you to look at the other at the other uh, videos. Uh, but we determine fixed and variable cost. We plot the costs for each location, and then we can select location with lowest cost for expected production volume. So we get those crossover points, and it allows us to say depending on what our expected volume is, which location gives us the best choice. So in this case, we have Timmins has the lowest fixed cost, but the highest variable cost, it goes up at a higher rate. So less than a thousand units, Timmins is the cheapest. And then uh, Sault Ste. Marie has a higher fixed cost, lower variable cost. At a thousand, they cross uh, and they go up 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 here uh, and then we have North Bay highest fixed cost but the lowest variable cost and we see that at about 2,500 units uh, North Bay becomes cheaper than uh, Sault Ste. Marie so if our expected volume was 2,000 within this range Sault Ste. Marie is the cheapest product and we're, we're looking at 2,000 we can see Sault Ste. Marie has the lowest cost at that point. So based on locational break-even analysis, Sault Ste. Marie is the cheapest. Now that is, again, one, we could take this cost and put it into a factor weighting method if we had other factors that, that, uh, that uh, we think are important. The next approach is what's called the center of gravity method. And the center of gravity method is a way uh, that that we can get a sense of where we might look for a location and it's primarily for distribution centers or things like that 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 it looks at ways of minimizing distribution costs and it considers the location of markets or suppliers volume of goods shipped to those markets and the shipping cost or distance so so what it says is we're not going to just take the average of, of locations. We're going to consider how far apart they are and also the volume that goes to each one of those locations in order to make that decision. So you, you place the existing locations on a coordinate grid. I will do a separate video on the center of gravity method. Uh, grid origin and scale is arbitrary because really we're looking at the relative position of these places on the grid it doesn't matter if we start at zero zero and go from there it is the relative <coughs> excuse me the relative position of the different locations that really matter we then calculate the x and y coordinates for the center of gravity uh, and it assumes cost is directly proportional to the distance and volume shift so you'll see that when we give an example so for the x coordinate you take a sum of uh, the x coordinate for location ix times the quantity or number of trips that uh, get shipped to location x divided by all of the quantities that you ship. So that essentially weights the average location with the highest number of shipments most heavily. Y coordinate is the same. The sum of the Y coordinates times their number of trips divided by the total number of trips or total quantity. And that provides us with uh, uh, an optimal X and an optimal Y. So if we had here as an example, Owen Sound is at 3120, Oshawa is 9110, X coordinate, Y coordinate, 130, 130, 60, 40. I don't know if these numbers are actually the accurate relative to the location of those four places. Uh, I'm using this as an example. 
the number of containers shipped per month to each one of those locations. So 2,000 to Owen Sound, 1,000 to Oshawa, 1,000 to Kingston, and 2,000 to Erie, Pennsylvania. So clearly, Erie and Owen Sound are more important markets to us. Because we ship more there, we're going to want to be a little bit closer. So then for the X coordinate, we take 30 times 2,000 plus 90 times 1,000 plus 130 times 1,000 plus 60 times 2,000 and we divide them by the sum of all of those weights and we get 66.7, which you can see is closer to Erie and Owen Sound than it is to Kingston. And we do the same for the Y coordinate. That gives us an indication of where we should look for building. Now, in this circumstance, we have other factors that might come into play. Owen Sound uh, and Kingston, there isn't a direct route. If you have something that's sort of average and you end up in Peterborough, you may actually have to go down to the 401, across and then up the 400 and then across to Owen Sound. So transportation makes a difference. Erie, Pennsylvania is south of the lake, uh, and so we can't just drive through the lake. So all of those factors don't get accounted for in the center of gravity method and should be in consideration. The center of gravity gives you a rough indication of where you might want to think about building. Again, you'll have to consider availability of land. This looks like it might be right in the middle of downtown Toronto. That might not be practical from a transportation perspective. So we might then say, we'll move it up north or we'll move it west. Uh, depending on other considerations, but this gives us a starting point from which to make a consideration of a, a location decision. <clears throat> the transportation model is similar to the uh, uh, is similar to the uh, center of gravity model, but it looks at a single location and does what's called a low distance score and it finds amounts to be shipped from several points of supply to several points of demand and then picks them based on the minimum total production and shipping costs. And it's a special class of linear programming models. We'll do a couple of examples quickly by hand in a separate video, but it'll give you a sense of how that uh, works and what we need to think about. So. You know, Volkswagen produces cars all over the place. They have to decide where to produce cars and where to ship cars and which cars to make in which locations. And so they look at these distances and they look at the volume shipped and then come up with a plan that minimizes those costs based on several different choices. So let's talk again, all of the points that I've made to date make sense uh, for a service uh, facility as much as they do for a production facility. But it's worth talking a little bit about uh, how services differ. And, and, and one of the things is the purchasing power of the customer drawing area. So we look not only at the volume or the population, but the potential purchasing power of, uh, of the customers in in a market service and image compatibility with demographics demographics of the customer drawing area so are we locating in a place that is going to draw the kinds of customers with the kinds of money that we're looking for competition we already talked about competitive clustering in some cases you want to cluster in some cases you want to be further apart and that can be impacted by the quality of the competition at uh, uniqueness of the firm's and competitors' locations, the degree to which uh, we are differentiated or, or and need to be differentiated, the physical qualities of facilities in neighboring businesses, our operating policies, and the quality of our management. So this strategy becomes probably even more complex than, than locating a production facility. So there are a bunch of different considerations that we can use, um, and, and I'm going to just revisit those. Volume and revenue, drawing area, purchasing power, competition, physical quality, parking, access. 
security, lighting, appearance, image. Are you, if you are a high-end furniture stock shop, do you want to be located in a low rent district where you'll save some money, but people won't feel, get the sense of the quality that you're selling? Rent, management capital, policies, hours, wage rates, tangible costs, transportation, shipment of finished goods, uh, cost of uh, uh, for, for customers to come see you, intangible and future costs, attitudes towards unions, quality of life, education expenditures, quality of provincial and local governments. So there are a bunch of factors that we'll want to consider. And this highlights the difference between service and goods. Services usually focus on costs, but not exclusively. Uh, sorry, goods usually focus on costs, but not exclusively, but services are more on revenue drawing people in. So another difference between goods and, and services, uh, we, we often do factor analysis and regression models where here we do the transportation method, the factor rating model, locational break even analysis, crossover charts that we've talked about already. Here we can use the factor rating method, but we might also use traffic counts uh, where we see the number of people that drive by and might see our store. Uh, how easy it is to get demographic analysis are the types of customers we want nearby purchasing power we might use the center of gravity and, and we will almost certainly use geographic information systems to help us drive those decisions so how do hotel chains select sites location is strategically important decision in the hospitality industry uh, and you know, one company, La Quinta, started with 35 independent variables and worked to refine a regression model to predict profitability. The final model only had four variables, the price of building, median income levels, state population per inn, and location of nearby colleges because being around a college is good for this kind of hotel. So they could predict 51% of the profitability with just these four things. So these are complex decisions and ones that are not taken lightly. On the other hand, a call center requires neither face-to-face -face contact nor movement of materials. So you have a very broad low number of location op options. You can put it almost anywhere. You want to be close to staff. We're not always paying very well, so you might want to be on the bus line so that they can come by public transit, but you don't have to pay for a high visibility location because no one's coming to see you. And so in this circumstance, traditional variables are no longer relevant. Cost and availability of labor may drive location decisions. So what I wanted to highlight here is not that call centers are special or, or require additional attention, but that any type of facility will have a different set of criteria that we need to that we need to think of. And one model will not fit all, excuse me, all circumstances. So to wrap up, location can determine up to 50% of the operating expense. So it becomes an important strategic decision. It's critical to determining your revenue potential, particularly for services. Industrial farms need to consider both tangible and, uh, and intangible costs. Some methods, factor rating, break-even analysis, center of gravity, transportation models with low distance scores, which we'll cover in separate videos, all uh, are worth, uh, uh, all have a role to play. The numbers can help you make a decision. They can't make a decision before you. And each type of location should have a different set of criteria because different things matter for different kinds of businesses. So that wraps up what I would say is a, a traditional sort of introductory lecture into location analysis. I will post this video shortly uh, and then I will post subsequent videos on factor rating, break even analysis and center of gravity. So. Uh, otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks and have a great day.